Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, I'll be providing you some tips and tricks that you can accomplish with the LG G Flex 2. So one thing to keep in mind is that the volume rocker buttons and power buttons are not on the side of the device like other devices tend to have them. It's actually on the back. What you can actually do is press and hold the down volume button, which will automatically open the camera app. And of course, while the screen is still off, you can press and hold the up volume button. This will take you to the quick memo app. Now the flex feature is one of the most unique aspects about this device and I do have to mention that I can just keep pressing on this device and there's no worry of it cracking the screen or damaging the plastic at the back, that's what it's meant to do. And to demonstrate that self-healing back, I'm just going to scratch with my car keys and scratch rather hard and lightly in different spots. And I just want to demonstrate that these marks you can see are the ones that I press really hard on the back of the uh, device. I applied quite a bit of pressure and they weren't able to disappear completely, but they did fade a lot more. Whereas the light scratches did fade out pretty much completely. So if you're leaving it in your pocket, there's no worry about it being damaged. This is a result of really hard scratching. So while the screen is off, you actually get a quick preview of your notifications. If you just simply swipe down the screen just a little bit, you get a preview of the time and how many notification counts you have for a particular application. Of course, still on the screen being off, what you can do is double tap the screen. Now this is actually default out of the box. You can change this setting, I'll show it to you later on. But again, just to demonstrate again, just simply double tap on the screen, it'll turn the screen on. Right now I only have swipe lock security, so just literally I just swipe any direction anywhere and it'll unlock the phone. So a couple of easy methods to quickly turn off the screen is one is that from the home screen, if you have access to somewhere the wall paper at the background, if you can tap it, well, you can just double tap on it and it'll turn the screen off. This won't work if you double tap it of any of the icons on the home screen, so you'll need some empty space. But the way to get around that though that LG has included is you can simply double tap the notification bar. So it's not that difficult, just simply double tap on it and the screen turns off. Now on your home screen, you actually have on the left, by default, like a LG kind of health app at the top here and you also have some smart tips which is kind of like a quick instruction guide on how to use the device. So as mentioned out of the box on the left you have your LG exclusive features here and if you swipe over to the right this is where your generic uh, applications and shortcuts will be. Now if you pinch in you can actually get the ability to add more screens if you just hit that plus icon or added another screen but if you want to remove something you hold and drag it up to the remove. Now this actually allows you to hold and drag the LG exclusive and it will be removed from your home screen. And as you can see, if you want to add that exclusive LG features back, it's telling you to hit the plus here and I'll just add it back up. And if you want to change your home screen, which is actually this one right here, just simply tap a home button on another screen. It'll keep switching them around. Now, another thing is that if you pinch out while on the home screen, it'll get rid of all widgets and icons just temporarily and give you a preview of your wallpaper background if you want to look at the picture. So again, there are more options available for the lock screen. I will get into them later on in this video, but let's just move along with what you have available on the home screen for now. So opening up your app drawer dock, you can just go through your apps and widgets. Of course, you have that selection up here available. But you also have the ability to search through your apps. If you have a lot of apps, you can search for them and it'll be a lot easier and quicker to find them. You also have the ability to customize the way you want to rearrange your app drawer. So you can view apps by name, download a date, uh, the user customization. You can show large icons, which actually makes it a little bit easier and there it'll change the icons to look a lot larger. You can choose to hide and show apps. If you just check mark them and you click that check mark, it'll hide them. It doesn't uninstall them, it just hides them from your view, which kind of can clear up a lot of color if you get a lot of bloatware with your phone. You can edit and uninstall apps. This basically allows you, if it has a red X, that means you have the ability to uninstall that particular application if you wish. Home screen settings, I'm just going to go into it now. It's actually available in the system settings menu, but I'll just go through it here. Just figure it's kind of all easy to uh, go through one time. So Smart Bulletin is actually those exclusive LG apps, the health one and that tips. On the left side of your home screen, you can activate it on and off here. Like I showed you how you can pinch and then remove it afterwards. You also have the ability to do it from here. You also have themes, which basically allows you to download additional themes if they are available, of course. I'm going to skip over features like wallpaper and other generic Android features. Now, if you were to go to select home and tap on it, you'll notice that there's some Something called Easy Home. When you tap on it, it basically makes everything large and easy to read and understand. It makes the interface a lot easier to control and use. But for those of you that are interested in wanting to know what comes with Android Lollipop, which is what this device is running straight out of the box, I'll have a link to that video in the video description. So screen swipe effect is basically when you're shifting through your home screen left and right. It basically allows you to change the animation and you actually get a preview here. 
so you don't have to actually implement it and then find out what it does after, which is really annoying as some phone manufacturers do. I like seeing the preview just like that. Home screen looping just basically you allow you to infinitely loop left and right and you'll just stay on your home screen. It'll just keep going on and on. So one more thing to point out is if you notice, if you try to go all the way over, the screen does start to stretch, which is kind of neat. Just a nice little gimmick I thought I'll point out there. But you'd also have the ability to customize certain icons and the way they behave. So for example, if you have a folder, as this one is comes with stock, if you long press and hold on it and you just let go, you'll get this like blue box around it. This basically allows you to expand it and give you a larger preview. But I wanted to show you something, another cool thing is that you can actually customize almost any icon you want. So Google Play Store is actually a non-customizable app, but you can actually customize the shortcut for it. So if you long press, let go. As you can see, I don't have that blue box option to expand it, but I had this little paintbrush icon. If I basically tap on it when I get the chance, I can actually change the way the icon looks. I can change it through any of the preset images here, or I can add my own photo if I go to add new. I can actually change how large do I want the icon to be. So I can do five by five grid, which I have done and I'm gonna show you right now. And then depending on the grid size, you can actually add your own photo from your gallery from it. For example, this is the default Google Play Store application. Shortcut, go all the way right. This entire picture is my five by five grid. Uh, shortcut for the Google Play Store. As you can see in small text, is Google Play. And what I just did, the phone allows you to add a picture to that shortcut. So if I were to tap on it, it actually opens up the Google Play Store. So you can actually do a lot of customization. You can have almost any picture you want from your gallery for any app shortcut, which to me is wicked awesome. And from almost any application that does have a menu, for example, the Google Play Store, if I were to open it up, if I long press the recent apps button, it'll bring up the menu button. If I go to the home screen, it also still acts like the menu button. As you can see now, I have the menu button for my home screen, which LG provides. The default weather application widget that is on the main screen, if you actually tap this little arrow down here, what I'll basically do is give you important events that are coming up, such as birthdays and other notifications that you might have on your calendars, for example. So you can actually customize the notification drawer, which actually comes very cluttered out of the box with the phone. You have your brightness screen control, volume control, and you had this list was much larger. But in order to clean it up, you can just swipe over to the far right Right here and you see edit you can turn off brightness volume you can change anything you want here to turn it on and off you can rearrange them if you wish and of course if I were to press back and exit it saves the change now you notice that the volume and brightness control levels have disappeared now if I were to activate something here in the notification drawer called Q slide uh, what it basically does bring you with a selection of preset apps from LG this doesn't really work with all apps if you were to download from the Google Play Store so if we open the calculator for example what it basically does is give you a floating window. You can actually just move it around, you can expand it, make it smaller, bigger, and you can just exit out just as you wish, just like that. Moving along, if you go to Quick Memo Plus, this basically gives you an immediate screenshot. And as you can see, I just drew a straight line, I can do something else. You don't have to draw on this if you don't want, you can just take a screenshot like that and just leave it. And if you want, if you want to take a screenshot in the regular fashion, of course, you just press and hold the vo down volume button and the power button at the same time. But basically what you can do is simply move the commands and controls up here. And as you can see, you can crop what portion of the screen that you want to animate and work with. And of course, there's a special selection called invert colors. This will have a great effect on uh, people's vision. Uh, I find this way too bright myself, really, really bright. But for some people with some poor vision, this actually might help them see the phone a lot better. Okay, so do you have a multi-window app function available? You can accomplish this in two ways. You can either press the recent apps button and then click dual view or dual window rather, or you can press and hold the back button for a few seconds and you have the ability to open two apps at the same time. So for example, if I were to do recent, this is what I recently use. I use YouTube and the folder search at the same time. So for example, if I wanted to bring Chrome, I'll just drag that to the bottom, for example, and I'll bring up my gallery on the top. And as you can see, I'm able to use two apps at the same time. And of course, that's just not all. You can also change the, which one you want to be the more predominant window. You can change the actual window sizes. Now, typically out of the box, the system settings menu had this tab view of options. I didn't like this. I thought things would be put in the wrong spot like some other phone manufacturers did, but things are actually organized very well. But if you still don't like this, you can go with the more traditional Android uh, view and change it to a list mode. 
So the networks tab, there's nothing really to show here, nothing that special. So we'll go over to the more fun stuff. For example, you have Miracast, which basically if you're a media player device or your smart TV, for example, if it does support Miracast, you can mirror whatever's on your LG G Flex 2 straight to your TV. The other cool wireless feature, of course, is the IR Blaster, which allows you to use the remote control built into your LG G Flex and use it as a universal remote control for your home theater devices if, of course, your home theater devices are able to be recognized by the LG G Flex 2. Now going over to the system settings menu and the sound tab, there's nothing really to show you guys. Even though the menu does look very long and lengthy, it has pretty much the stock Android features from Lollipop. There's nothing really special here. Uh, the only thing I want to mention is, that, of course, if you receive a message or a call, you do have the ability to turn on voice notification, which basically it'll read out loud what's happening with that particular notification. Now going over to the display tab and under home screen, I have shown this to you guys just a few minutes ago, so we'll skip past that because I went through it all already. If you go to lock screen, this is where you have one of the cooler features of the knock code. So for example, if the screen is off right now, I have nothing special set, it just double tap. And to unlock, I just simply swipe in any direction. But knock code basically allows you to literally put in a type of knocking code. So you have a grid of four, and you can just use a customized pattern with three to eight taps. So basically, I'll just do this. So if I were to turn it off, if I were to double tap, I'm basically presented with the lock tapping screen. So I can't just simply swipe or do anything. I can constantly tap. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If I want to unlock, I have to use my tapping unlock code. So it's left two, right two. So one, two, one, two. And as you can see, now I have access to the phone itself. When you have the swipe screen on for the unlock screen, you do have the ability to change the way the animation will effect. So let's just do a quick demonstration that I changed it. As you can see, the animation changed a little bit. And moving just a little bit further, you do have the ability to add shortcuts. Now I do have these options here to add up to five shortcuts and I can tap on any one. And it'll bring up a list of all my applications and I can just choose any one I want. So from the lock screen, while swipe mode is on, it doesn't work with knock code, I've noticed. Um, you're able to just go to your lock screen, swipe up on that particular application, whoops, and it'll unlock straight to that application instead. If you turn on weather animation, this basically turns on the weather animation on your lock screen. So for example, if you're using the LG weather app and it is customized a little bit, it will show various things. If your area, there's snow or rain and the weather app picks it up, it'll show well, rain or snow on your lock screen. So going back to the display tab, if you go to home touch buttons, to me this is one of the most important and coolest functions I'm going to get into in button combination, but uh, I'll, I'll demonstrate that shortly. Uh, let's go over to the less cooler features, so the color. For example, you can change the color background of the home touch buttons at the bottom. As you can see, it's changed to white, but the black one's a little bit easier to see, so I'll go back to that. Hide the home touch buttons actually allows you to hide them if a certain app is opened up. So I'm going to hide them within, let's say, Android Wear. Open Android Wear. You notice that the buttons at the bottom have disappeared, but you can actually bring them back just by simply swiping up. And going back to home touch buttons one last time, this is one of the coolest features that should be included in stock Android. Um, it was not even included in the Nexus 6, and that device was massive. It was a poor decision on Google, and I think that this feature should be common sense to include in stock Android because you can actually rearrange these buttons. So I'm going to do them up here, but you'll see them changing live. So the back button's on the right right now. As you can see, as I drag it along, it actually changed to the left to match what I'm doing there. I can just change the multitasking button and just change them around, and it's instant. This is fantastic if you have a larger screen device, which some of the prime Android devices like this one, if it's great if you're left-handed or right-handed. It gives you the option to change the way around. They decided to add these buttons here. I'm gonna add them up, but you are limited to how many you can add. As you can see, you only have a maximum of five. But basically, the other one you can add is the quick notification drop-down. You have a, sorry, I forgot I have to do it over here. Uh, the quick memo plus. Which I demonstrated for you guys earlier, so we'll take that out. But there you have it, if you press it down here, the dual window uh, option activates and that would work also for the Q slide, which I demonstrated for you guys anyway. So you have the other options like changing the font type and the font size, so that would be like the font here and some of the other systems, apps. And of course you change the brightness, nothing too important. Uh, something that isn't too common you see is that you have the ability to turn sorry, the notification LED light on and off. And of course then you have something called screen mode. I have it on Vivid, I tend to leave it on this. I find that it saturates the colors a little bit more. Nothing terrible, but I, more richer colors. You have the option to change it to standard, which is a bit more duller. Uh, and then of course you have natural, which is even more dull. But it's all a matter of per personal preference. And going back, if you go to screen off effect, this is basically what happens when you turn off these screens. So right now, if I put preview on retro, you got that retro tube 
shrinking down effect. So we'll go into accessibility. I'm going to focus on this a little bit just because a lot of people ignore this section, but sometimes it's useful. Um, so for example, I'm going to skip some of these because I went over them. Some of them are just very standard and very popular, but touch zoom, something you don't really know about. So if you triple tap anywhere, one, two, three, as you can see, I'm able to navigate and zoom in. You have screen shade, which basically dims the backlight, which is actually the backlighting uh, for those who have poor uh, vision. Then you have some other features that are becoming a little bit more popular. And that, of course, is under the general tab. If you go to gestures, basically, you can answer an incoming call and you bring the phone to your ear. It uses the motion sensors within the device to figure that out. You can do things like flipping the phone over to turn off alarms or even a voice call if you want. And that flip function also applies to video. If you want to pause the video, all you do is apply it to its surface on its face and it'll pause the video as well as hang up calls. Now, this quick circle case is actually exclusive more towards cases designed for LG devices. Um, I actually don't have one on me, but basically what happened is you would have a case that would have like a circle that's cut out. So basically you only see a portion of the screen. And while this feature is on, it would basically try to show only certain notifications within that screen. Now continue under the general tab, if you were to select one handed operation, this actually allows you to use certain functions with one hand. So for example, I have enabled it for the dial keypad. So I'm gonna show you that. So going over the dial keypad, you'll notice that the keypad is actually on the right side, whereas usually it takes up a the whole screen space at the bottom. So if I were to tap with this arrow, it'll basically change which side I want it on. So the one hand operation works well. And this also allows you to use it on, say the keyboard, as you saw earlier on that menu. Scrolling down a little bit further, you have something called smart cleaning, which tries to scan cache files, um, things that are taking up temporary um, amount of storage, like temporary files. So it tries to scan through everything and then clear them out for you. So now going into the camera app, there's a couple things I want to show you. There's not many options, but there are some things that are designed specifically for this device. For example, you notice that the sidebars are kind of empty. You have quick access to the gallery, a back button to exit out the camera app and this menu button. But while there's no sidebars visible, if you just tap anywhere on the screen, the camera will instantly focus on that and then take a picture immediately. So let me just tap on this figurine and instant. Now, if I don't want to do that, I can actually bring up the side menu bars. And as you can see, now when I tap on something within the screen, it'll just focus on it, but not take the picture. Instead, it'll focus and then you have to manually press the take picture button. So you do have the option to change between those special modes. And of course, while recording a video, you do have the ability to stop or pause the video recording itself. You have standard features like flash on and off. Then of course you can change between front facing camera and the rear camera, but you can actually do this while anywhere on this screen, you can just swipe any direction. You can do left, right, up and down, as you can see as my camera. So let's swipe down this time and I'll still switch to the other camera. If I were to switch over to mode, this is what I mean. It's very limited, but it's meant to be a minimalistic, easy to use interface as you only have an auto picture taking mode, panorama and dual camera mode. Dual camera mode basically allows you to use the front and rear facing cameras at the same time. So as you can see, the small one is the small window rather is my front facing camera. But if I were to tap on it, it'll become the primary picture the rear camera becomes a smaller picture as I'm able to slide around the window and you can slide this window around as the video is recording. Now one thing to mention during this function is that it's strange and bizarre that it can only record the entire thing in 720p. Continuing on, if you hit this little gear icon, you're going to get additional settings. You can turn HDR mode on and off. 13 megapixel actually allows you to control the quality of pictures and videos being taken. And of course, there's the voice activation. I turned it off right now. If I were to leave it on and I was to say something like cheese, so let's try that out. Okay. Cheese, it takes the picture for you. And of course you have a whole bunch of other sayings. You don't have to limit it to cheese, but it gives you a list of what is commands are available. You have timer and of course grid mode as well. Switching back to the front facing camera, there is this slider here, which is like a beautified face. So if you have some pimples and stuff, it'll try to clear that out. But if you go too high, it'll look rather artificial. Now while in this mode, there is a cool feature that if you bring up an open palm and if you were to close it, It'll take the picture. So there's me. Hello. Hi. So it detects my palm. As you guys can see, the grid is flying around. It's very accurate at finding a palm. Close it into a fist and it'll count down to a self portrait. So let's do that right now. It's doing a countdown right now and it's going to take the picture. So as you can see, I just took the picture with the open palm and this is the preview again. My, my mouth is open, so I look really weird. But you'll notice that the preview hasn't disappeared yet. That's because the camera and the phone thinks I'm looking at it because it's so close to the face and it's at a 90 degree angle. If I were to take it back like this, the preview disappears because it thinks that I'm no longer looking at the preview. So let's go back to the camera. So that's the end of my tips and tricks video for the LG G Flex 2. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to know if it's worth checking out, be sure to check out the review video. You can find a link to that video in the video description, as well as a whole bunch of 
all their videos regarding this device. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter links also in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.